G'day guys, welcome back. Uh, I had a heap of uh, requests for a video of my last painting that I did with my three flip cups. I was just playing around practicing and I didn't do a video so I thought I'll, I'll do one. Uh, whether or not I can achieve the same results this time around, I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So, um, I have got my pouring medium is Floetrol, as usual, and I'm using my Global Paint. So I've got white, and this one is a navy, it's called Harbour Nights, which is a limited edition colour. And I've got Coastal Turquoise, which is this one, and then this one here is a mixture 50-50 of gold and copper. So it's kind of a rose, gold, bronzy colour, I guess. So um, normally, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I use three to one Floetrol, three parts Floetrol, one part paint. With this flip cup, I'm going a little bit thicker. I'm doing 2.5 to one. So I've got 100 grams of Floetrol to 40 grams of paint. So when you sort of swirl it around it sits on the top for a, a couple of seconds before it disappears it's quite thick stick stands up in it but it still pours nicely off the stick so for cells today I'm using the coconut milk hair serum and I'm cutting back that was part of my experiment last time cutting back on the silicone normally I add one drop per 30 grams or one drop per ounce um, I am cutting back to one drop per colour, none in the white. So one, and I've just put in this little squeezy bottle because it's easier than trying to pump out one drop. Because it's just impossible to pump out one drop, I find. Right, that's it. One drop in each. And I'm going to give it a good stir because it's really quite thick, this coconut milk. Hair serum, it's uh, got... One of the ingredients is dimethicone. It's got a couple of others in there as well, but dimethicone works really well. But it is quite sort of thick and syrupy. Okay, start layering my flip cups. Well, I'm not actually going to layer, I'm going to pour from up high. So I put a bit of white in the bottom. Oops. It's a bit of a lump in that one. I'm using my same cups that I used the other day and they've got a bit of dried paint on the sides. So I probably should have gone for fresh cups, but I didn't want to waste them. So I'm just pouring this in from up high because I want to mix my paints. Swirl that around so I don't get a big blob of copper. Now this is a 30 by 40 centimeter cardboard that I'm working on. Uh, it's 450 grams in weight, I think it is, uh, 12 by 16 inch. A lot of people ask me, where do you get your card from? Where do you get your papers, your thick papers from? Um, any sort of office supply or um, stationery shop should have it. Just ask for the thickest paper that they've got. A bit more white. More of our lovely navy. You can see the cells already reacting in the cup. Round and round. And I'm going to fill these cups. Because with a flip cup, oops, lumpy bits again, I don't know how this is going to work. i just have to use fresh cups in future. Um, because I'm doing a flip cup, I want, um, I don't want to have to tilt very much. Because I'm going for cells, I don't want to have to tilt. Otherwise you lose your lovely cell shapes. So if you make sure you've got plenty of paint, work out how much you need, 
make an extra cup full. Last little bit of copper and finish it off a little bit more white. Okay, three full cups. You can sell, see the cells popping up on top already. I'm just going to flip these over. Bang. Let that sit there for a minute and let the paints all run down. And I don't know whether or not I'll need to torch today with my little heat gun there. We'll see what happens. Sometimes uh, when I'm doing the flip cups, I'll also spray my cups with um, some silicone just to help the paint flow out and empty from the cup. I didn't do that today. I forgot all about it, but um, I don't know that it makes a huge amount of difference. I've got so much paint in here. Last little bit that's left in the cup won't really matter. So I'm going to tip these down like that. So it should cover a lot of that little board, a canvas card. Um, so I'm hoping I don't have to tilt very much. Already some nice cells happening here. I don't want a massive cells. I want some background with some selected cells. Um, in the past where I've used one drop of silicone per 30 grams or per ounce, I've just got a massive cells. And I just don't think that's as attractive of having some background and having the um, occasional cells here and there, which is what I did on my last one. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Push it up and pull down a little bit. Take that around. I'm keeping that linear effect. So don't swirl or drop in the middle. See that beautiful cells popping up already? One drop of silicone in each colour. Alright, this one up, down and around. Still got a little bit of paint in my cups if I need to just pop some on the corners. Look at that. Look at those beautiful cells. See, this is a lot of cells here already. The flow troll does that. It gives you the tiny cells and the um, coconut milk is giving these bigger cells. Floetrol automatically gives cells. So it's nice having a mixture of the little ones and the big ones. Last one. Just pop a little bit up there. A little bit up there. So as you can see, plenty of paint. going to be a lot of paint on this canvas, this card I should say. It's going to take quite a few days to dry. But that's okay. I have found that my paint does not crack when I use Floetrol. Uh, if I use glue it has cracked but um, with the Floetrol it hasn't cracked. So I don't mind having a lot of paint on here. I mean, I will tilt some off, but it's still going to be quite thick. So I've kept those linear patterns. So all I'm going to do is just cover these bottom bits, come back this way, cover the bits towards me, and that will be it. So just very slowly tilt and get your paint to run off the bottom. These bits here where I've come up, these two blobs here where I've come up with the leftover cup, maybe not so attractive, so maybe I can try not to do that next time. But it's how we learn. Now I'm just going to go over this corner down here, because I don't really like that terribly much, but not at the expense of losing anything up here. So if it's looking as if this is going out of shape, just to get this corner, covered, I'll leave it. Just take your time, nice and slow. It's going over the edge. I 
If there's one tiny little section on a painting that you don't like, you may just have to say, I'll live with it. Because trying to fix one tiny corner like that, you may lose a whole big area that you do like. So if there's one tiny little bit that you're not happy with, just try and live with it. Alright, turn it around. Now I'm going to go this way and get the paint off that bottom edge there. Nice and slow. There's a lot of paint on here, so the paint's actually moving quite freely. Um, it's not stretching too much. If you don't have your paint very thick, when you do move it, it will stretch. But if there's a lot there, um, it sort of goes with the flow, as you say, and it won't stretch terribly out of shape. So try for a lot of paint on your canvas and you'll find you have better results. It's going to help this along a bit. The weight of the paint there on the dry card just helps the paint flow better. waiting for this last little corner here. Okay, and I'll come back, take the weight of the paint back to the middle. Now when you're working on this cooling rack, just try and run your finger underneath. Make sure that there's not too much paint stuck under your card, otherwise you'll find in a few days your card will be stuck to the cooling rack. Right, so there's a lot going on up here. I'm going to just try and move it down a bit this way. Turn that around. A little bit more paint going off the edge there. It's quite thick so I can do that without losing any of my cell formation here. Okay, now I'm going to, wow, huge cells. Didn't want such big cells, but what can you do? Now there's some lacing over here, over the turquoise from the copper. Copper always seems to give me lacing. Um, I'm going to torch because I can see that under the white here is a lot of cells. I'm just going to give it a very light torching because I don't want a lot of cells. bubbles and bringing a few cells up. You can see these ones here appearing. So we're going to have a combination of some big cells and some little cells which is nice. So give it a torch and then wait. See what happens. Because more cells are going to pop up. These have come up here, these have all come up here. These little ones have come up. So I really like the difference of cell size. You've got these massive ones here. You've got some medium sized ones. We've got all the lacing. We've got some tiny little cells. And then we've got the original tiny little ones from the flow troll. So if I torch along here, I might get some more there. And I'll see if there's anything hiding under here as well. Tiny little bit. Okay. I'm just going to see if there's much glare on that. I might have to turn the lights off. It's not too bad. All right, I'm going to take you in for a close up. Just 
take the camera off the tripod. Sorry about the banging. There we go. Someone's got their whipper snipper going outside. It's a public holiday here today, so it's a bit noisy. Okay. So a little bit different to the last one, probably a little bit more copper in this one than the last one. The little, uh, last one had a little bit more blue, but still I think very pretty. I love all the different cell sizes. So I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.